And we are live. We are live. What's up, Jameson? Hey, not much, man. It's a good evening. Uh, I hope you're ready to talk about some history. You know, you, you told me about this guy. I thought you were pulling my leg, man. This guy's connected hey, to everybody. Everybody from George Washington to Abraham Lincoln. This is It's a dynasty. It's a dynasty. Everybody in between. Jefferson Davis, Black Hawk mm -hmm. War, George Rogers Clark. Um, Ohio George, Governor. Governors. We go. <laughs> Fort Sumter. You know, what do you call the, the – uh, uh, the uh, Chief Justice, you know, John Marshall. Yeah, John, John Marshall. We get them all, man. It's a, it's a Andy hodgepodge. All, all day long. Wrapped up in one family, right? One family. A dynasty. I like the word dynasty. They're a dynasty. dynasty. The Anderson Did dynasty. Did you watch the uh, yeah, Anderson dynasty? Did you watch dynasty back in the day? You're probably too young for that. So your mom probably yeah, watched that. So. Yeah, I don't we'll know. All right. We'll, after, we'll be right back after the intro video. Welcome, Welcome to, to History Nuts. I'm Russ Carson Jr., the founder of Family Tree Nuts. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for people and we produce videos at historic locations and videos that help to honor your ancestors. I'm Jameson Cable, founder of the Kentucky History Podcast, where we talk about anything Kentucky history, events, people, if it has to do with Kentucky, we're going to discuss it. And we've teamed up together to bring you History Nuts. History Nuts is a live show where we talk about, you guessed it, history. Right. History seems to be less and less to people today, but we are trying to do everything we can to keep it alive. Absolutely. History is a passion of ours, for sure, but it connects to you. Russ, tell us about the best part of the show. You can join in. You can comment and ask questions live. We've got a great topic today, and we know you're going to enjoy this episode of History Nuts. All right, there we are. There we are. I'm ready for this, Jameson. Me too. It's a good story, but hey, first, subscribe to the channels if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, like, the, like and share the page on Facebook. Um, comments. We got some interesting information about comments, right? We do, don't we? Because this is the very first time that we've done this. Should we tell them or not? They deserve to know. They deserve to know. They've been here before, right? First of all, number one, we can see your comments. We can mm -hmm. see them. We're going to be watching and we can see the comments. So we'll be replying for the most part. But however, however, it's not live. Right We're now, live. as you're looking at me, I'm well, I'm not driving. My wife's probably driving, but I'm in Wisconsin. <laughs> so, you know, and but we're going to be monitoring these comments. This is not technically live. We're filming this pre recorded, but it's going out live. Comment because everybody else can still see your comments. We'll be able to reply to your comments on the comments. We just can't reply to you right now unless we got telepathy, right? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what's going to happen here in a little bit. But we want your input. We really do, though, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about to that. I mean, things from the Civil War to Revolutionary War. So there's a good chance we're going to talk about something or somebody that you know. Yeah, I would say that if you were watching History Nuts, you're going to know a lot of these people we're going to talk about. So let's get into it. The, the Anderson Dynasty. The Anderson dynasty, some, I'm sure nobody knows who the Andersons are, but they were massively connected to, well, just about everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. But we, we want to start with the patriarch, of course, Richard Clough. Richard Clough Anderson. Uh, Clough. And that is Clough. Clough? I'm saying that right, right? I reckon. <laughs> you know, uh, here, Clough. Let's put him a picture of him up there. There you go. Look, he's a it could be Clough. Clow, yeah, but, yeah, Clow. I don't know. Maybe we need a we need a linguistic person to uh, clarify there that for us, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, he so he was born. Um, he's he's the patriarch of this family. Uh, he was born in January the twelfth of seventeen fifty in Goldmine, Hanover County, Virginia. Um, Goldmine. Um, gold you tell me he's born in Goldmine. The name of his town is Goldmine. 
from what I understand, yes. I tell you what, man. If you want to, if you want to, you know, people to move to your town, call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of like exactly. The called Iceland, Iceland, and Greenland. You know, Greenland, Greenland. Yeah. It was kind of opposite, right? Gold yeah. mine. It, yeah. It's probably a, it's probably a crap hole, wasn't it? Well, well, I mean, it's an early, early town. I would say it's nothing special, <laughs> unless you're from Goldmine, and it's a wonderful place. Wonderful place. Somebody, somebody's got to be from Goldmine seeing this. So, <laughs> moving on. Sorry to interrupt. We got a lot of yeah, stuff so, to cover. Yeah. So he he was um, the captain of the Hanover Militia. And that's one thing I know. We've kind of breezed over his youth, and I don't really know much about his youth. Uh, but he actually. Uh, was uh, was I said sorry Hanover militia uh, and fought in the Revolutionary War. Now he's got a huge connection here. Have you heard about the crossing of the Delaware? Right. What is that? Well, well, it's a big thing. Oh, here's us a picture here of old George Washington going across the Del Delaware, and guess who was with him? Old Richard Anderson. Oh, 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 cloth or cloud. I I think I, like I see him back in the back there. You see him? <laughs> yeah. He's that guy yeah. with that big old schnoz, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you know, let's go back to him. Look at there. You yeah. see? Now I want you to see that. Now there he is. You see him? I, there he is. I think I see him. He's the one. <laughs> he's the one they're telling time by. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he also another huge connection here when you think about Revolutionary War. Uh, he was the aide to Marquis de Lafayette. Oh, uh, yeah. During, yeah, during, during, our, our fighting Frenchman during the Battle of Yorktown. So that is um, another, I mean, big connection. I mean, this guy's, this guy's huge, right? He's connected yeah, he to was, everybody. So he was Lafayette's aide. Now, tell me that you're not related to him. Look at him. I, when, I, when I saw that picture of the Marquis de Lafayette, I'm like, that looks like Jameson. Look, look at <laughs> yeah. Well, that same forehead is. You throw yours out just a little bit. <laughs> There's a little look bit. Right there. let's, yeah. let's go back. Look at Jameson. Yeah. Look at the Marquis de Lafayette. The, you have the, got think, to be related to him, man. So <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I definitely have some French royalty somewhere back in the line. Of course you do. Straight out of <laughs> Rock Castle, right? Yeah. Cornbread yeah. Mafia so, has come from royalty. Uh, yeah. Cornbread Mafia. There you go. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, uh, so he's also a charter member of uh, the Society of Cincinnati. Uh, which was yeah. uh, founded in like 1783, I believe. Um, nice little pen, which is basically, it was basically a society for uh, uh, Continental Army uh, vets. Um, I'm pretty yeah, sure, yeah. I'm pretty sure Washington, all of them were members of it. Um, yeah. We're, we're a few other officers. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, kind of like a secret society, but you know, not really. Mm -hmm. It's just something in order. And uh, that's where the name of Cincinnati, you know, where that's where uh, General St. Clair changed the name of Cincinnati to Cincinnati after that mm -hmm. society right there. So whole nother video, right? Whole nother video. Whole nother video. Um, yeah, this, this this particular video we're doing could be about, I don't know, we could make like 40 videos off of the people that's in this, <laughs> maybe 50. So. Yeah, it might be a two-parter if we get too too long-winded. But um, so anyway, uh, he moves. Uh, he he gets his um, well. Some of the battles he fought in, he he was a lieutenant um, for the Continental Army. He he was wounded in the Battle of Trenton and Savannah, and that pretty much kind of put him on the side as far as his military um, career at the moment. I um, found that interesting that uh, you know Trenton's in New Jersey and Savannah, you know, was in South Carolina, yeah. so he was part of the you know the northern and the southern campaign which is mm -hmm. which is rare you know mostly usually yeah. people are in one or the other so mm -hmm. so after the war he moves to kentucky in uh, 1784 and he moves to what is jefferson county uh, which is louisville if you if you don't know um, what, what did but, you say where L louisville louisville how do you spell that uh, L O U I S V I L L E. Like <laughs> yes, some people would call that Louisville or Louisville. 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 <laughs> yeah. Got it. You gotta get your. You gotta get I your just pretty clear because just because we say Louisville, people watch this from all over the country. They have no idea what Louisville True. is. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so he was the chief surveyor of the mil village or the Virginia Military District. 
Um, and he'd been given, you know, uh, Revolutionary War vets, he'd been given land grant. Uh, so that's how he kind of got there. Uh, but he marries somebody very important, or at least the sister of somebody very important. He marries Elizabeth Clark in Who 1787. Who is that? She's uh, uh -huh. she's connected to a few people, isn't she? Uh huh. That she is the sister of George Rogers Clark. Look at that. There you go. Yeah. Talk about marrying yeah. marrying well there. Uh, yeah, yeah, and well, and it makes a lot of sense, you know. George Rogers Clark has a huge connection to Louisville. Here he is; he's he's moved to Louisville um, and marries his wife, or marries his George Rogers Clark, his sister. Um, yeah, he does. And and, and you know, GRC is one of my heroes. You know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody that so many people don't know hardly anything about. We've done multiple yeah. videos about GRC. Yeah, and uh, what especially early frontier man. He bring he comes up all the time. Absolutely, yeah, big mm -hmm. time. So um, they, him and Elizabeth have uh, three daughters and one son. And the one son is named Richard Cloth Anderson Jr. And we'll talk about him in just a second um, or about his life in just a second. That's a, that's a bit of a picture. He definitely inherited his daddy's nose. That's um, the first thing I noticed. <laughs> yeah. So um, a few other things. Um, he, he was a delegate for the Kentucky Convention Constitutional Convention in 1788. He was a presidential elector. In slow down, slow down. What did you say? What? Slow down. You're like he saying, was, uh, man, you're knocking me out with facts. <laughs> he, was, he was a delegate for what? The Kentucky Constitutional Convention. Like, yeah. Or the Statehood Convention, those, those right. sorts of things. In yeah, 88. Man. Yep. And then uh, five years later, um, he is a presidential elector. And he would yeah. have to be one of the first presidential electors because Kentucky had just become a state in 72 or That's 92. Right. So, 92, I, yeah. yeah. But his um, wife uh, sadly dies in 19, sorry, 1795, um, which is, you know, tragic. I'm, I'm sure I don't really know the cause, but he remarries two years later. And guess what? He remarries to another connected person. Mm -hmm. uh ann marshall who is the cousin yeah. of john marshall who was the first chief justice of the u.s wow so i mean pretty big pretty big names here he, he wasn't marrying my family that's for sure you know <laughs> you know he wasn't marrying the local farmer's daughter i guess you know <laughs> you know they, these people these these blue bloods you know they get connected mm -hmm so many ways especially with the lack of population of the time you know yeah so, yeah which was just you know the way of the system so america's a lot different well not totally different today but uh mm -hmm. um it's a little bit yeah. different so a little bit different but anyway yeah so he has they actually have him and ann have 12 children so that racks up a big total of 16 children that he has um and there's a lot of them that are important uh, don't we, we won't don't show the pictures of these, but I'm just going to run off these people's names, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more down the road. First, we mentioned was uh, uh, Richard um, Anderson Jr. Uh, the second one, or not, and this isn't birth order; these are just some of the names. Uh, Charles Anderson, who becomes the 27th governor of Ohio. William Marshall Anderson, who is an author, explorer, politician, all those sorts of things, and then a big one here. Robert Anderson, who actually don't surrenders. Tell him, don't tell him that. Don't tell him. Okay. That. Okay. All right. We'll go. We'll yeah, wait for Robert to the end. He's the big <laughs> one, man. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, son you stay with number us. one. Yeah, son number one. Yeah, hang on. Son number one is Anderson Jr. All right. Let's show uh, show him up there again. Um, he was born um, in 1788. Um, and he was born um, at a, a Soldier's Retreat, which is what their little place is called there in Jefferson County. Um, mm -hmm. His mother died, like we said earlier, when he was only seven years old. So uh, uh, pretty rough, but it takes a good quick turn. Guess what? He attended a private school in 1780 or in the 1790s. Not a lot of private schools going around, but he was a, he was able to attend a private school, but he had some very well connections. He also attended William and Mary College. Right there, you go. That's whoa, that's a nice looking. Uh, when, when when was it established? Do you know that right off the top of your head? 
Uh, it's the first school in, uh, in, in the new world, isn't it? William and Mary. Mm -hmm. I, I and believe I so, think yeah. that, uh, it, it, it's one of them schools that, uh, you know, so many people are, you know, when, you know, back in colonial history and stuff, uh, attended, I know that, uh, we've talked about, uh, um, um, Dr. Thomas Walker went to William and yep. Mary mm -hmm. and, you know, at this point in time, there, there, uh, um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of schools that are out there, Yale and Harvard and things like that. But, uh, mm -hmm. um, William and Mary was actually founded in 1693. Oh, so, whoa. That's an old one. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. so named yeah. after, you know, Mary Queen of Scots and William, mm -hmm. you know, the king mm -hmm. so so um oh anderson jr here he marries elizabeth guathme i don't know if i'm saying that right but guathme uh and it uh, sounds like uh it sounds like a, a welsh name to me mm -hmm. uh they have four children um he also studied law at virginia uh he began practicing law in louisville in 1815 and then we start getting uh, the connections start rolling in because guess what he gets into politics. Um, he has a pretty interesting story. His, his political career is quite, um, well, I mean, intriguing. He got to, he has some unusual um, positions, but they make a pretty big impact. Pretty big. Uh, yeah, very very diverse. You know, yeah. he's not a, he's not a name. He's not a Henry Clay. You know, mm -hmm. you know he's he's not a uh, you know Thomas Jefferson or. Or a name that you're gonna you're gonna know, but uh, very very d massively, you know, uh, internationally diverse, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, his first steps is the Kentucky legislature. Uh, he uh, is elected in 1815. He then moves to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1870 or 1817, and then he's elected to the chair of the Committee of Public Lands. You know, that's a federal position so he's pretty much knocking boots with the feds um he returns to kentucky what? Uh, becomes a legislator again becomes a speaker of house you're a little younger then than you. you need to check out what those that means but uh, go ahead so what's that go ahead just go ahead oh <laughs> um but now he, he gets a big job here and I, i'm going to um pronounce this the best i can all right he becomes he's appointed the Plenipotentiary of Columbia in right. 1823. I think it's but, a philanthropy. Philan philan yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a weird one. Uh, it, a it, big it, word. It's too good in, in Latin class. Digit, so. No, no. They didn't, they, not, they didn't offer it in Rock Castle. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah but, it's like philanthropy, but uh, you know, of dealing with mankind, you know, mankind and civilization yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah. So hey, and before before we forget, uh, make sure you comment, guys. We still want you to comment. Uh, we're watching mm -hmm. the comments, um, kind of thing. We're 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 commenting ourselves too. So, but uh, I just seen what you wrote, James, and that was funny. You know, but uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> forty eight hours from now. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he, he's basically a diplomatic head of a mission here. Um, he would be a b below the ambassador. That would be like yeah. the head person, you know, right. so he, he, pretty important little job here. He's got, uh, but while he's there, he negotiated with Pedro Gall um, and formed the Anderson Gall Ooh. treaty. Pedro. Uh, people probably. Yeah. People are thinking, what in the world is that going to do with anything? Do you think, do you but, think when, during his election he had vote for Pedro signs? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, he, he was the originator, I'm sure. <laughs> I guarantee you 90% of the people watching have no idea. No, if you know no, what no, I'm no. talking about when I say vote for Pedro, comment and let us know. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the treaty opened up trade relations between the U.S. and what was then called Guan, Gu Grand Colombia, which is basically Grand Colombia, I believe, if you translate Yeah, and that. Venezuela and, and, and that whole area. Mm -hmm. But why South is that treaty, why is that treaty a big deal? Well, it was the first treaty that the U.S. signed with, I'm going to say, it's another American state. Now, that does not, that, 
listen, we got North America, South America. That's what I mean by no, another American state. So yeah. not Europe, deal. not Europe, yep. not Russia, not, not Asian, not African, but another mm -hmm. on this side of the world during the Monroe doctrine, you know, our side of the world. Yep. So. Yep. yep. And, um, it, it lasted until about 1837. So, I mean, pretty, pretty cool little, I mean, look, look, we said that we said that in passing. Let's say that. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to dwell on that for just a second. This is a guy that if you're watching this, I'm willing to say that 99.9% of the people watching have no idea who this person is. Yeah. He is the he's a Kentuckian and he is the first person mm -hmm. that negotiated a treaty with the United States with a country that's not in Europe, Europe, Africa, or Asia. I think that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'll say this too. Um, I got, There's a video on, on, on my YouTube channel about him and his father that you can watch and check it out a bit more. I, I guess if you watch those, you may already know. But Yeah, um, put those, put those uh, links in here, Jameson, in the comments. Yeah, to those. yeah. Um, so that um, pretty, pretty, big, uh, pretty big ordeal. And of course, this kind of continues. Um, he is then the Andre Extraordinaire and Minister Plenipotentiary. Yeah. For the Panama for the Panama Congress of Nations. And he travels to Cartagena. Cartagena. Yeah. Look at that one. Cartagena. 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 Am I close? Cartagena. Yeah. Cartagena. I would yeah. Say Cartagena. And it, yeah. yeah. In 1826, so. <laughs> so he's on his way there, though, and he falls ill, and he dies of a yellow fever in Turbaco, Panama, um, and he is uh, taken back to um, uh, Jefferson County. And yeah, he's, he's buried off in Hurstbourne right there. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with that Hurstbourne area, you got a lot of good restaurants right there in Hurstbourne Parkway, man. Yep. So. yep. Um, and it's one thing all, that all the way from Panama to Louisville, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly, but that's a good month voyage or so. I mean, how long would that take to get there? I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know, wow, wow. But one thing that does still live, uh, or his uh, I guess legacy does still live on is Anderson County, Kentucky, is named after him. So, can you believe that? <laughs> yep. I want crazy. to know if you're watching this from Lawrenceburg, if you're watching this from Anderson <laughs> County, Kentucky, I want to know how many of you knew that that's who your county was named after. You know, uh, the guy that negotiated the first treaty with a, uh, another American state for the United States. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Really? Um, Not named after yeah. his dad who fought in the revolution. Named after mm -hmm. him. Not Which named after his, bro his brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you think we should take our commercial break now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that, right? You ready? Uh, well, well I'll, I'll, I'll lead in. My video is a video. It's a, just a clip of a video that's coming out this Friday, and uh, we're going to be doing some more videos about the Night Rider. So, um, and then you can talk about yours there. Yeah, my video that uh, the, the, both these clips are about a minute and a half. So we'll be right back. It's a little teaser from our video that's being released on Saturday night, uh, just a couple nights from now. Uh, real excited about this one, but you want to check them both out. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. After the first raid of the Night Riders, fear increased, and so did the raids. And so did their numbers. The Night Riders spread across western Kentucky, intimidating and forcing the farmers in as many communities as they could. And slowly, the violence increased. <sighs> yeah, that, I mean, that, that's really good, man. 
Loving it. This is where the ruthless Confederate guerrilla, Captain William Quantrell, the commander of the infamous Quantrell's Raiders, met his final demise. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm in Spencer County, Kentucky, just a little bit south of Taylorsville, and I'm very near the location where William Quantrill was mortally wounded and captured. And by the way, if you like these types of videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. I've got a special guest with me today. Sir, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Davis Downs. And Mr. Downs, what is your connection, uh, what is your interest with uh, Captain Quantrill in this story? Well, I'm a lifelong resident of Spencer County, Kentucky, and the historical marker that was dedicated in uh, 1957 and I was in the seventh grade and had written a book report on Quantrill because he was killed uh, or shot a mile and a half from where I, my current residence. Wow. So I, uh, I was asked to participate in the dedication along with Joe Creason who was a writer for the Louisville Cure Journal uh, and at the dedication when the sign was put at Wakefield, Kentucky. Then in Wakefield, yeah, you, you were just a little community Little Mapdoc community is south of Taylorsville. There. Right, and it was in it, during the Civil War. It was uh, a place uh, that contained a lot of uh, Southern sympathizers. Yeah, Little buddy. Teasers. Little <laughs> teasers on both of them, right? You got me want ready for your video on Friday night, man. What time is that? Yeah. Friday. Uh, it'll be it'll be posted six a.m. So. Ah, Friday, Friday morning. morning. Yeah, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to that. that. That looks really intriguing. You've come a long way with those videos. Love them. And and that video about Quantrill, that's uh, Captain William Quantrill. I mean, Quantrill's Raiders, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. That's some good stuff, man. Good, we're, good, good we're, history. We're, me and Mr. Downs there, right there where Quantrill was captured. Well, he was shot in the back and, and uh, captured. And, uh, well, I won't mm -hmm. tell you the rest of the story there, but we talk a lot about him. <laughs> And it's it's it that's a minute and a half clip of a 16 minute long video. So that's a really good one oh. to talk about. So yeah. that's that's Saturday yeah. night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So cool, cool. Well, be be ready to tune in. Um, so the next son of the Andersons. Are you ready Hang for on. Him? Make sure y'all y'all chime in. Let us know where you're watching from. We're not reading your comments, but we're commenting on your comments on there. So <laughs> we still want to have you involved, please. Yes. Um, and again, yeah, we appreciate it. Let's know where you're watching from as well. So um, Charles, though, Charles Anderson, um, he is born in Louisville and he graduates from the Miami University all the way down in Florida. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> talking, about, talking about the one in Ohio. Um, hey, little uh, side note. Why, why is there a Miami, Ohio and the Miami uh, River, the Little Miami, the Great Miami River, and then there's Miami uh, Fourth. Well, the I mean the Native Americans, my the Miami Tribe is what the people in Ohio are named after, correct? Yeah, but why is there a Miami, Florida? That one I don't know. Here's your little trivia question: mm -hmm. Land speculation. A bunch of guys from the Miami River area went down and started a, like a land speculation company down there in Southern Florida. Oh, Miami. Miami. So Miami oh. is actually named after the. After, oh, okay. So if you're talking cool. about college football, they talk about the U. You know, that's oh. Miami. But then you got Miami <laughs> of Ohio. Really, my, that was the OGs. That the Miami. That's Ohio. it. Yeah. <laughs> Anderson's brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, he goes. He goes to Miami University in 1833. Um, he's admitted to the uh, Ohio bar, so like you know, the law thing, and he starts Isn't practicing in in Dayton. Yeah, so he's from Louisville area there, but he goes mm -hmm. to Miami, and that spurns his whole life there in Ohio. Yep, yep. Uh, pretty much, yeah, pretty much he stays in Ohio uh, for the most part. He he becomes a senator. He's a big-time advocate for um, African-American rights. Yeah. Um, and and this, well, this actually – Well, well, <laughs> and, and you know, he goes to Ohio and, you know, there, there's a, I guess there's a lot of movement in Ohio when, you know, some of the things I've read, there's a lot of um, publications and that sort of, you know, well, I mean, and, you know, it becomes a, as far as civil war goes, it's a free state. So that um, is a big thing, big 
I guess, draw as well. Um, but at one time, he goes to Texas in the yeah. 1860, and that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big date there in 1860. Yeah, that's there's some things are getting pretty hot right there. Not just the weather in Texas. <laughs> so he goes to Texas, uh, he goes to San Antonio, and he makes a big Union speech, and it does not go well. Um, no, it does not. Can you imagine uh, Adolf Hitler, one of his, you know, henchmen, you know, giving a big speech about 1940 in New York City. <laughs> you know, yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. not going to go well. No. Um, so, it, and, and it actually angers a lot of the pro-Confederate people there in uh, Texas, and they threaten him and his family, and he decides to move back to Dayton. <laughs> yeah, can you wise, imagine? Probably a wise move. That's probably his wife's decision. You know, he might have thought he was he was going to be making a change. You know, he was making it, but his yeah. wife says, "We are Listen, getting the freaking heck out of here." here. So, yeah. 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 so I really so, like to think that's what happened. Yeah. So we come back in. He comes back to Ohio, and guess who calls him up? Oh, Abraham Lincoln. Who's that? Oh, big big president. I mean, you know, Civil War guy here. Uh, there you go, old commander in chief, uh, and he sends him to he sends him to Europe uh, to kind of campaign for the Union. I love that um, picture of him, though. You know, that's such an awesome photo. Yeah, you know, that's him after the war. You know, right as the war or when the war was ending, he's got that bed. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> anyway. uh, so so yeah, so I mean, pretty big. I mean, that's a pretty big appointment from from the uh, uh, president to. I was making jokes. Where's he appointing? Oh, to the to what? Oh, he went to the uh to Europe to campaign yeah. for the Union. Yeah, actually, um, sure did. So a uh, pretty, I mean, pretty high position. But but man, um, he, you know, most of Europe was supporting the Confederacy. By the way, you know, so. Uh, well, you know, I was gonna because uh, you know uh, I, I was I was gonna bring that up, but I didn't want to get us too off <laughs> off topic. Yeah, too off topic. We we, you know, <laughs> we could talk all night uh, long. Huh? Yeah. Um. So um. But he goes back home. Uh, and he, he joins the 93rd Ohio Infantry uh, as a colonel. Um, he is wounded, though, in the Battle of Stone River. Mm -hmm. um, and he uh, re resigns, and then he returns to Ohio to recover from his, uh, his wounds. Um, but that's not the biggest thing that happens to him, I guess, maybe. Um, he hops into politics again, becomes the lieutenant governor of Ohio in 1863. Guess what happens to... I guess some tragic fate. The governor of Ohio, John Bra Bro Bra, yeah, is that right? Bra, yes, Bro, Bro, <laughs> Bro, <laughs> ahead of his time. He's definitely ahead of his time. But a year after they, they take office, uh, he he dies. Uh, uh, the governor dies, and so um, Charles uh, steps up and becomes the governor of Ohio. And he's actually only governor for like. Um, Five months. Five but months, yeah. Still, still. You know, he's the All governor. Right. Gets to hang his hang his hat on that one. Um that's pretty much it. After he after his um uh position as the governor, he uh, goes home and practices law in Kentucky. Yeah. So moves back to Kentucky, uh died at eighty one, so crazy long life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the the family tree of these guys, you know. So, mm -hmm. and we're gonna here when we get down to a few more, we're gonna. I mean, it's gonna be like these guys are like we're in the mix of everything. I mean, when it comes to we're halfway, we're 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 not even we're about halfway through the brothers, aren't we? Well, yeah, we got I think two more, two more. Yeah, I mean, uh, and this one, go ahead. It's it's just nuts. I mean, let me, <laughs> it is. Let me recap before we go. You know, we're talking about yeah. dad. You know, he's in the Revolutionary War. He's crossing the mm -hmm. Delaware, for goodness sake. You know, yep. moves, to, moves to Kentucky. He's, you know, marrying George Rogers Clark's sister, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, Marshall. John Marshall's. John Marshall, the, you know, Chief Justice John Marshall's cousin. Cousin, cousin. Yep. Yeah, you know, and, and then he's got two boys, you know, that uh, one, be, you know, gets a county named after him, negotiates the mm -hmm. first treaty of uh, mm -hmm. the United States with a non-European or Asian or African power. And, and then now he's got another son that becomes the governor of Ohio and, and we got some big ones coming. <laughs> yeah. Now this next one, William Marshall Anderson, who's named after, you know, judge John Marshall, um, who, who actually went by Marshall. Um, he is probably, I mean, 
out of all of them, if I if I was to say who had the most interesting life, I'm gonna say he probably did because uh, he's he goes on a bit of an adventure. <laughs> Yeah, he does. And I got a surprise for you about him you don't even know about, but keep going. Oh, all right, all right. So in 1834, um, he, he goes on a trip to the, to the West, uh, a fur trading party, and uh, he kept a journal about all his encounters. And some of the people he encountered, uh, a lot of the mountain men of the time, but, oh, Kit Carson. And everybody knows Kit Carson, oh, right? Oh, yeah, you better know Kit yeah. Carson. Oh, cuz, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another Colonel Carson, right? So. <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so he 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 talks about Kit Carson. Uh, he he does come back to Ohio, does the typical family trade of practicing law for a little while in a Chillicothe. Um, yeah, Chillicothe. Yeah. Well, um, he marries uh, the daughter of the, a former governor, uh, Duncan McCarthy. Yeah. Um, uh, he as well. Yeah, uh, he runs for Congress, but is unsuccessful a few times. Um, his other brother, Large, uh, uh, managed a legal and fin- uh, managed the legal and financial matters of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, uh, some uh, important stuff, I guess. Yeah, but he, he's um, <laughs> becoming like a, a Catholic fanatic. Yeah, he kind of becomes a, a, a zealous. Uh, I mean, I guess that would be the term. Um, because the family's not Catholic, but he was. Yeah, yeah. Um, side story there. Side story, yeah. So, Good brother, yeah. His next wild journey in 1865, he journeys to Mexico uh, with this archaeological exp- expedition. And their plan, uh, um, sorry, um, he, he's there for a while. You know, um, he actually gets yellow fever. Um, he he is able to um, uh, in in Veracruz. I don't really exactly know what spot that is. Um, uh, um, he cut. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. on the on the eastern coast area there, Veracruz. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, excuse me. So he um, he's there. He he uh, gets sick. But the whole point, it's very confusing on why he is there. Like the whole you know, mission or archaeology, uh, and come to find out, I believe he's a Confederate sympathizer. Now, if I'm correct, his brother though was a you know big time union union man. Big time, big time, big um, time, big time. Yeah. Um, so he he does though. He moves back to. Um, uh, he gets sick and he comes back to the U.S. Um, for and lives there for about 15 years in Circleville, Ohio. Um, <laughs> his house that he lived in is um, uh, actually on the National Registry um, of Historic Places. Circleville, yeah. I don't know where that's at. Do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with Circleville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, J- Jameson, that's my home county. Is it? And Circleville is our high school rival. We hate those guys. We hate the Circleville <laughs> Tigers, man. You know, <laughs> like, that's what I was telling you. Dude. I got a like, oh, a- You got a connection you don't even know about. That's my. That's cool. Pick away so, county. You know, so, so uh, have you been to his? Have you been to his? I've seen his house. Uh, honest to goodness, I have not until we started wow. talking about this. And I promise you, I'll be there. I, I talked to the Pickaway County Historical Society. Um, that's where my mm-hmm. family is all from. And uh, uh, by the way, you know, you've heard of Chief Logan. You know, Logan's Elm is right there. It's right near yeah. where the, the Pickaway Plains. Uh, Chillicothe mm-hmm. is right down the road. Tons of Native American Shawnee history right there. But getting way off topic. Now way you know topic. where uh, I'm not a native kentuckian but don't tell anybody yeah so here we go here we go. uh some more um uh, real quick th- this is like his, so his son and this is probably one of the few sons we'll talk about of the you know, son of the son um, right sure was grandson. thomas yeah grandson thomas MacArthur anderson and he was a decorated officer in the civil war yeah and again in the spanish-american war um and <laughs> and the <laughs> Yeah. Philippine insurrection that followed. Yeah. I mean, right. He's in it all. 
He's a, he, 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 and this is the grandson of Marshall, so or the son of Marshall, the grandson of our Revolutionary War veteran, yes, a war revolution, um, Andrew, uh, Richard Anderson. So, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, interesting story. We got, um, one more son. Are you ready? One for this more one? son, yeah, buddy. He's the big one, and there is, uh, he's got a, he's got a long list of stuff here. Um, so Robert Anderson. Oh Robert, looking quite snazzy there. He 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 may not. Uh, I don't know. He looks like he probably got the nose too, but just maybe not. Maybe an inch or two off. <laughs> <laughs> so he he um, is probably the the most interesting, I guess I could say, in, in yes, the sense of his, you know, his one somebody his one thing stuff that you've heard of. Yeah, the one his one his one biggest thing is just I mean like just like oh my goodness like yo this connection is is pretty awesome. Um, so Anderson was born at Soldiers Retreat, uh, the family estate in Louisville. Uh, he graduated from West Point um, in 1825. I wish I wish I would have put down their birth years because I I don't know all of their birth years right off the top of my head. Um, but it, you know you th gotta think if he was graduating from West Point he was probably graduating. You know, he'd had to have been at least 20, I would assume, or around that. Um, trying to get an age for it. When did he graduate at West Point? 1825. Yeah. So um, uh, he, he received a commission as a lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of Artillery. Artillery. <clears throat> um, uh, and, and, and a few months after his graduation, um, he, was, he became uh, the private secretary to his older brother, Richard Cloth Anderson Jr. So, you know, got that uh, connection. And he actually went um, on the tour to Grand Columbia, uh, to Columbia. He went, he traveled with his brother. So uh, he also served in the Black Hawk War of 1832. Right. Um, don't know too much about, about that uh, war necessarily, but that's Black Hawk well, that, right there, correct? Right? That, that's a big war there in that time period. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of guys that we've talked about in the past. That's Chief Black Hawk right there, but uh, that's in Illinois. And, uh, you know, uh, you got Zachary Taylor, you know, the Kentuckian Zachary mm -hmm. Taylor. That's the, that's the commander of that war. But then also uh, Jefferson Davis that married Zachary Taylor's daughter. Mm -hmm. You know who Jefferson Davis is, don't you? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, President of the Confederacy <laughs> involved in the Black Hawk War, and uh, there's another fellow that's uh, part of that spent some time in the Black Hawk War. You know, you ever heard of oh, that? Oh, Abe, yes, you know, yes, yeah, oh, Abe. Uh, you know, with the with the Illinois militia, you know, fighting against uh, Black Hawk. I think he kind of has the same hairdo you have. I think you ought to go ahead and get your ears <laughs> out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Black I, I, Hawk. I, I... <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know. I probably can't pull it off. That, that's a whole other thing. We got to talk about some daggone Black Hawk War. That's a war that yeah. we know about, but a lot of people that you know about were involved yeah. in that. Yeah. So during all this, like he he's uh, he trans transports Black Hawk to uh, Jefferson's barracks, uh, yeah. and is assisted by Jefferson Davis. You know, he has an uh, interaction with Abe as well. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, and this is what's his interaction with Abe. Um, he is the he um, is the distinction of um, mustering. Yeah, he mustered oh, really? mustered him out in and out. Uh, muster mustering just, like you know right. enlisting and joining up with and then mustering. Okay, him All right. the okay. House. Yeah, yeah, he's got interaction yeah. with old Abe, you know, before he's Abe, you know, Abe, so. Abe yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I would bet that's probably the connection to the brothers. I mean, we're looking at you know. Hey, you know this guy, Abraham Lincoln? Hey, yeah, I got a brother. Yeah, I got 12 of them or however many there was, you know. <laughs> uh, you know anyway, that, that's how it goes, uh, rubbing elbows. Um, yeah. But um, he, he becomes the first lieutenant in like 1833. Uh, he serves in the Second Seminole War. Um, uh, he He's uh, the general uh, or assistant adjutant. 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 General of... Winfield Scott, um, he becomes a captain. Um, Zachary Taylor's rival. He served yeah. with Zachary Taylor in Black Hawk's War, Second Seminole War, now the Mexican War. Well, no, yep. uh, yeah, Winfield Scott is uh, Taylor's rival. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you said it, you know, 
Mexican uh, Mexican American War um, uh, participated in the siege of Veracruz. Uh, uh, a ba the Battle of Malino del Rey. Malino del Rey. Uh, anyway, yeah. a Malino lot of battles. Yeah. yeah, he he is wounded, um, and he is uh, takes some sick leave, um, and he um, uh, uh, he's at a few forts, uh, Fort Preble Preble. Preble in Maine. Is that, am I saying that right? Preble in Maine? Yeah. You got me there, brother. If you're watching okay. from Maine, right. let us know how to spell yeah, that. Yeah. P-R-E-B-L-E. Preble? Preble? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, we don't um, know everything. We know a whole lot, but we don't know yeah, everything. Yeah, but not with everything. Um, <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know, this is some kind of stuff. All this is building up to the big one. All right. And in November of 1860, might be ringing some bells. He yeah, is assigned uh, to command U.S. forces around Charleston, South Carolina. Um, in South Carolina, secedes from the Union in 1860 in December. Um, Anderson, first, the first, he, the what? The first, the first state. Oh yeah, the first state. Yeah, first yeah. State so. um, Anderson remains loyal to the Union. Um, and he, you know, he was a, a native of Kentucky, a former, uh, you know, a, and a former slaveholder. Um, he moved his small garrison um, from Fort Moultrie, 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 um, which was kind of a small fort, not that you know, not that much defense there. I've been there. And he moves it. He moves it to Fort Sumter, which is in the middle of you know. Charleston Harbor, all that, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big one. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So, and then in 1861, in February, uh, the Confederate States are, uh, of America are formed, and they uh, take charge, and they, on the orders of President Jefferson Davis, they order to capture Fort Sumter. And it's kind of a big battle, you know, kind of the first battle of the Civil War. <laughs> uh, yeah. He, um the, they attack it. Um, Anderson's um, Anderson actually. So the commander, uh, let's see. So the uh, artillery attack was commanded by Brigadier General PGT Beauregard. Beauregard. <laughs> Beauregard. Beauregard. Yeah, uh, Cajun. Who was actually? He was actually. He had been Anderson's student at West Point. Can you believe so, that? That is pretty crazy. Um, you know, the, the, the battle goes on. Makes you nauseous uh, thinking about this. You know what I'm saying? We, we <laughs> talk about these history things in passing, but this yeah. is somebody he had a personal relationship with, and he, now we're mortal enemies. Yeah. And we Can, yeah. Same, God, you know, we, man, I, I don't know. Another, another topic, but. Another topic, yeah. Yeah. And well, so, um, you know, the battle of Fort Sumter uh, really doesn't last um, uh, that long. No one dies. Um, well, well. Well, well. Um, Excuse me, but uh, one one Union soldier right is killed, um, and another is uh, wounded, but um, is wounded during a fifty gun salute. Right? <laughs> yeah, how about that? Huh? That's a nice yeah. little Jeopardy question, trivia question. There, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. So um, Anderson, though, uh, he is the one who surrenders Fort Sumter. Wow! And yeah. Look, look at uh, that's crazy. Just, bam, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, we're going to talk a little more about that, but bam, you know, what, what, yeah. what, a, what a family connection, you know, these are, this is, these are brothers, you know, they're, they're step, step nephews of George Rogers Clark, you know, and, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're grand, they're, they're cousins of, uh, you know, John Marshall, John you know, Marshall. Yeah. They, their, their dad was under George Washington. They, they all, um, they, they knew Abraham Lincoln, um, Gosh, man. It's pretty crazy. Brother yeah. of the governor, you know? I mean. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, pretty crazy, uh, the whole thing. Um, he kind of becomes this national hero, too, because of the stand there at Fort Sumter, you know, yeah. uh, being able to with, you know, withhold the, the Confederates' uh, attack. Uh, I mean, he does surrender in the in the end. Uh, I mean, he pretty much didn't really have much of a choice. Um, he took the, took the standard, took the, took the flag to uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah he takes the flag to new york city and it, i mean 
it's kind of this, I mean, he kind of becomes this big deal, this big symbol well, of, I think the, it's the of biggest the gathering in North America at up until that date, you know, he's, he's kind of a, kind mm -hmm. of a rock star for the rallying cry of the union of maintaining the union. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, that's, I mean, that, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, there's, there's a, there's a bit more, but I'll probably just, uh, you know, well, jump over to, that and get he that. continues to fight, you know, for, with Ohio, mm -hmm. with an Ohio unit and, uh, in the, in the civil war. And, mm -hmm. uh, right at the end of the war though, uh, this fella, you might've heard of, heard of this guy. He oh, oh, he Robert D. E. Lee. Right. He, after he resigned, he went back to, uh, uh, here's a lot about it, you know, but, but he went back and, Raise that flag at four something. Yeah, at four something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, well, and I will bring up one thing that's kind of just you know because it's full circle, of course. Um, he was actually put in charge of um, uh, Kentucky um, for a brief time, uh, but Lincoln uh, Lincoln um, uh, removed him, I believe, and um, I, can't, I can't think of who he put in after that. Uh, I know the butcher. Burbridge was there, but it was somebody in between there, I believe. That um, the butcher, come on, man! Yeah. <laughs> you sound like a Confederate man. So some people are going to be a hero. I know he had some dealings with his command. Went to this guy too, you know. So we call him, <laughs> you know, up to Sherman too, you know. But yeah. uh, we're skimming yeah. through. We've been doing, you know, we, we're gone so long. We're skimming through so many things about these guys. These guys deserve their own shows. But yeah, uh, yeah, um, but yeah. So, so I mean. I mean that's that's about it. He he um he actually goes to France for a while and he dies in France. Yeah, he died in, <laughs> and he dies he died in Lyon. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I bet you didn't so, know it was pronounced Lyon. <laughs> no, <laughs> or, no, no. It's not. He didn't die in Lyon. He died in Nice, didn't he? Nice, Nice, yeah, yeah Nice, nice. <laughs> not nice, Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, pretty crazy, man. I mean, that's a wild. I mean, how, how, I mean, how do you get that? Well, can, I mean, I guess if you had 16 kids, some of them are bound to do something. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you know, you're a daggone, you know, grand or a or nephew of this guy, George mm -hmm. Rogers Clark, nephew of the, this guy. Yep. Uh, William uh, Clark. Uh, Lewis, Lewis. Yep. Lewis and Clark expedition. Mm -hmm. You know, other guys are cousins to this guy. Yep. You know, My dad fought with, um, uh, I don't know if he's going to show that one next. I don't know which one he's going to George yeah. Washington. That cross yeah. Delaware. You know. Yeah. Uh, Mark, he's uh, against, uh, uh, you know, Chief Black. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, his dad, was the, dad was the aide to Marquis de Lafayette. Um, yeah. Lincoln Connection. I mean. Yeah. That was the, yeah his dad was the aide to Marquis de Lafayette. He was Jameson's great, 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 great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, what, 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 yeah. what, 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 it's amazing dynasty, you know, yeah. and, you know, you know, to me, the brother and, and, well, another brother's explorer, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, um, paleontologist and such. I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, do you have any brothers? Yeah, two. That's it. Yeah. But, you know, you and your brothers are, you got some catching up to do, man. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so. Yeah. 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 We got a lot of catching up to do to meet up yeah. to, to yeah, these my, people. Me and my brother do too. But uh, it's a real neat yeah. story that we wanted to bring out there, you know, about Anderson. And if you're from mm -hmm. Kentucky, you've heard of Anderson County and uh, uh, named after just one of the yeah. brothers. There, I mean, so. Yeah. And there's, I mean, it, I mean, what all they did, I mean, geez, it's a lot. I mean, there's a lot that they were connected to just about everybody. If you can think all major players in you in the U S history. And I mean, even, you know, and I mean, not, I mean, there's the probably involvements they had probably with people in Kentucky as well. But I mean, these were big time guys. Major players in U.S. history up to the Civil War. And I'm curious to know mm -hmm. the descendants, you know, what, what the story is yeah. that the descendants are today. So, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it'd be really cool if somebody was related to them, right? So, <laughs> so, okay. I guess we'll, we'll get out of here, but, you know, make sure you let us know where you're watching from and, uh, yeah. And, and give us some feedback too on how it went as far as it being pre-recorded and, and, and that sort of stuff too because this is the first time we're, we're doing this uh we want to be as consistent as possible as far as having shows so 
Yeah, we can't, uh, you know, we can't do this. My son is a, uh, a freak track athlete and we've got, we have a visit this weekend with the university of Wisconsin, the Badgers. So we'll be going to, uh, <laughs> it will be here. It will be all weekend here at uh, Wisconsin and Madison <laughs> and they're playing Iowa you know, kind of thing on Saturday. So, but now, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, is it, ooh, ooh, is that what, is that, is that, is that what, uh, uh Wisconsin says for you? Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, or, you know, they go, I know they do that big W for Wisconsin, <laughs> but, uh, I'm, hopefully, hopefully we're going to shoot some video, a video or two up there at Wisconsin too. So mm-hmm. by the way, Camp Randall stadium, you know, was Camp Randall. It's one of the oldest stadiums in the United States. That's where Wisconsin mm-hmm. Badgers play, but that was a, uh, civil war recruitment, uh, base right there. Oh, cool. So they cool. recruited, they trained the troops and stuff before they yeah. went off the battle. And now there's a football stadium on top of it. Uh, very old <laughs> one. But anyway, that's yeah. not what we're talking about tonight, but uh, that's where I'm at. So hope you all enjoyed. What we got yep. next week. Oh, we got some good stuff. Let's not tell them, man. No. All right. All right. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff coming. Well, we weeks. wanted to do this one and this one and this one and this one. We're like, no, we need to do it live with comments, you know. <laughs> I mean, we got some great yeah. shows coming up. So, not that this yeah. one wasn't cool, but uh, so. Right. Anderson right, Dynasty. Well, Anderson Dynasty. There you go. All right. Well, we'll see you soon, guys. And thanks for watching. And hey, remember, Family Tree Nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.